Welcome to chapter three of my masterclass on the Dragon Sicilian. As always, with the theory-based chapters, I will leave a PGN for all of the moves that you are about to learn in the description. So if you have chess-based, chessable, you can even use maybe Lee Chess, put that in and learn the moves like that. In this chapter, we are going to learn the Yugoslav attack, which... As I've said in the previous two chapters, begins like this. White is clearly going for a huge attack quickly, making this a very critical uh, chapter to know. Now, after knight c6, bishop to c4 is the move that we're looking at today. Uh, aside from this, white can castle uh, long here. This is the move that we looked at in the previous chapter, and today we are focusing on bishop c4, which is the second main move, putting the bishop on a really nice diagonal. The main strategical idea for white is stopping the move d5. And instead of expanding in the center, we are going to maintain this pretty solid pawn structure and here go for an attack with our pieces. Uh, specifically, the queen comes out, the rook eventually comes to the c-file, and the bishop. So let's see what happens. So bishop to c4. We take. Uh, as I touched upon in the introduction chapter, you can also play bishop d7, uh, which is totally possible, uh, but then this bishop is left undisturbed here, and although, again, this is playable, I prefer to play knight takes knight, removing the knight from defending e6, so then we can play bishop to e6, and incredibly quickly disturb um, and oppose this pretty strong piece. Now here they have mainly two options. They can put their bishop back to b3 or take on e6. Let's start by looking at taking on e6 because although this seems to be a very dangerous structure that we're entering, this is very misleading. Although this pawn is indeed a weakness here on e6, it's untouchable. The knight can never really come here comfortably. It will be hit away with e5, in some cases even winning material. Uh, and they don't have a light square bishop anymore to try to win this pawn. So although this pawn is a weakness, it's not that important. And in an endgame scenario, let's say the queens get traded off, one very important uh, strategy and idea is to move the king to f7 in these sort of positions. If this open file proves to be uh, unimportant in, in this position, then you want to move your king to f7. Only do this if the queens are off or if there's... Uh, clearly a safe um, position to do so, but moving the king to f7 is a common idea to really secure this pawn. Even sometimes, if you want to also get the idea of opening the f-file, as you will see, sometimes even, funnily enough, the king can land on d7 in some endgame positions where the rooks get really active files and everything is secure. So this is uh, the strategical ideas and concepts behind the structure. Just to show an example, let's say castles we can now go queen to a5, let's say king to b1, we can now go rook to c8, very natural getting the rook in, h4, we go knight to h5. We're very happy to trade a very powerful bishop for them, for a bishop that hasn't really done much. The knight can even sit on h5 because it's, while the knight is here, it's controlling these really critical uh, squares, the knight in some positions trying to jump in, and one of the big benefits is when we are hit with a g4, guess which pawn becomes really weak and guess which rook can attack said pawn. And so for this reason, these sort of endgames are fairly comfortable for black. Uh, the only thing, only tip, watch out for this diagonal with the king a little bit more exposed here. Of course, something like queen to d4 now is not meaningful at all. It doesn't pose a threat, it's just one check. Uh, but in the future... Make sure you keep that under control. And I mean, from here, this is very pleasant. Of course, the queen is really active. There's no threats. You know, g4 weakens f3 too much for, for white to play. The knight is really powerful. Again, as I said, jumping here. And we have good pressure. At some point, we can build up the pressure with something like b5, b4, maybe launching the a-pawn. It's a, it's a more calm position compared to some of the other positions I will show you. So this is typically what happens if they take, uh, mostly using this open f-file is the thing that is different and the thing that you want to take advantage of in these positions. 
Now let's look at bishop to b3. Here we go queen to a5, activating the queen. The queen typically comes to a5 and they castle long. Of course, the whole point of what they played is to attack here, and so castling uh, short makes little sense. Um, now one of the big benefits, and something I should point out, when we took, they took with the bishop, because taking with the queen would leave the queen exposed. But now the bishop is here, and so it will take them some more time to activate the bishop. And I've had games where the opponent spends a ton of time uh, to force the bishop onto h6. In the meantime, we attack really comfortably um, and quickly. And so that is one nice bonus. The bishop is very much misplaced here. We continue with b5, and here you can see the fun of this dragon system. We're looking to play b4, kick away the knight, and just attack. King to b1 is a very common move in these sort of positions. The idea is to guard all of these pawns, um, but also one tactical idea is to make this queen no longer have contact with the king. And the reason this is important is, let's say we waste a move, go h5 here, uh, or let's say a6. Now they can try potentially moves like knight to d5, the queen being undefended here. And after we take, it's not with check, therefore they can insert this pretty annoying knight takes e7 check move. And after the king moves, they take here and they're up a pawn and uh, the knight is active. So to avoid this mess that they're trying to create with king to b1, we immediately strike with b4 here, cutting this diagonal, making all of these tricks no longer work. So really they more or less have to make a choice, where does the knight move? now? 100% uh, more often than not, you're going to see knight to d5. And this is just a really strong centralized knight. Here we start by taking, and after bishop takes, we play knight takes, and after uh, pawn takes, um, which is the main line, they can try bishop takes g7 here, but after uh, this really nice tactical sequence, knight to c3, this won't work for them. I'll come back to this in a second, but just to show you the main line, uh, it's e takes knight, and now queen takes d5, and of course, this is a very pleasant position. The queen is really nicely centralized here, and there's no tricks like bishop takes g7, because of course here we can simply trade off the queens, then take back, and here is actually a very instructive point. In the introduction video, if you saw that, I mentioned this point about the pawn structure being better. You can really see that here. Um, we got into some endgame, and because our pawns haven't moved, this is super safe, really untouchable, um, and uh, in contrast to that, we're going to be able to attack on the c-file, maybe launch these pawns, and so our pawn structure is really safe here. The king can sit on f6, or maybe f8, maybe even d7, just to guard this e7 pawn, um, and this endgame is relatively good for us, so instead of this, um, I mean, well, they can't really do anything else. Our queen is really centralized, and we're also happy um, to take here, trade everything, and again go into a pleasant endgame. So for this reason, they might try bishop takes g7, but as I hinted earlier, we have a very nice tactical trick, knight to c3 check, and the point is if they take bishop takes c3, then after pawn takes, queen takes, we can even trade, and once again, the endgame is coming in clutch. This pawn structure is super safe and solid, at this point they don't even have the e-file uh, to show for anything, and Although we are temporarily down material, we're going to win one of these pawns. It's unavoidable. Something like rook to c8, rook d3. Now we can go rook c5 at some point, maybe throw in a check. Uh, and for the most part, just stack here. Their king can never come because, again, we have this check. So um, this is a, a very pleasant endgame for us. We're, we're the only ones with the initiative. So they can try b take c3. Now here, don't rush to take because if we take immediately, they can actually take with the bishop, and although the king is exposed, sure, they've kind of regrouped their pieces, and the queen is attacked, um, so better is actually instead to go rook f b8 here, and just keep the pressure going, setting up the initiative, uh, or setting up the attack here, keeping the initiative, and the threat is, of course, just to take, winning the queen, there's also going to be ideas of checkmate, ideas of stacking, this is a very fun sort of position to play. So these are what happens. Uh, these are the sort of lines that exist after b4 here. 
if the king if the knight goes to d d5 but the knight can also go to e2 and although this is far less common it's something to know because the idea is the knight wants to eventually find itself on d4 where it's really powerful especially considering the main idea for us in many of these lines is to go queen to b5 and launch an attack but now the bishop can in some cases retreat the knight can come to d4 and you can see some issues with that and so better here is to take and after pawn takes uh, we continue by going for instance e5 we can try to attack as well with pushing these pawns up now that the bishop won't be attacked that's totally fine and playable uh, but i also like this nice touch with e5 here and the point is after the bishop retreats now we go rook d5 and we're even trying to go for d5 and uh, rook d8 and we're trying to go for d5 maybe even d4 maybe taking exposing the attack here we're grabbing a lot of space in the center and the attack is by no means over so that's uh, about all you really need to know about these lines i try to keep these theory based uh, moves very short because i want to have an emphasis on the ideas and the strategy as opposed to the moves um, and just to recap said ideas and strategies if they take we essentially use this open f file put the knight on h5 park it there and try to target f3 whenever they push uh, their g pawn the queen often also comes here and our rooks find really open files and if they play the more common bishop to b3 we develop very similarly queen to a5 uh, their bishop's a bit misplaced it can't access h6 as easily and once again our rooks will find good files and we have a very direct and easy plan b5 b4 queen b5 a5 a4 a3 the king is not safe by any means on c1 or b1 wherever it lands so super easy to play opening really fun really aggressive and exciting lines for you to play hopefully you enjoyed this video subscribe if you're new around here like this video if you enjoyed it and of course stay tuned for the rest of this master class that i will be uploading soon thank you for watching and i'll see you next time peace out <laughs>